Let's take a look at class example 3 here. If log base 5 of x is equal 6, then we're going to try and find the value of log base 125 of x. Now here we're going to compare bases here and let's write 125 as a power of 5. So that's going to be equal to 5 cubed. Now using our rule that we know of logarithms, and I know that there are a lot of rules about logarithms that we have to remember, but we can think of it like this. So I'll write it here, is that if we have y is equal to log base b to the n of x, that's going to be equal to 1 over n of log base b to the x. So you have this vertical stretch of 1 over n. So here we've noticed that when we write 125 as base 5, then you have an exponent of 3, which is our n value. So following this format, we can say then that this would be equal to y would be equal, oh wait, log, log of 125 to the x will be equal to 1 over 3 log 5 to the x. Let's prove the result by converting to exponential form. Actually, before we prove it, let's actually find the value then. We know, now know from the information that log base 5 of x is 6. So this value right here is equal to 6. So here this is equal to 1 third times 6. And 1 third of 6 is equal to 2. So our final value is 2. Well, let's prove the results here using uh, exponential form. So our strategy is to find two values of x and equate them to each other. So here we go. If log base 5 of x equals 6, then in exponential form of this equation, then 5 to the 6 is equal to x. Well, let's figure out this value here. We can say let this v equal this unknown value, log base 125 of x. And then we can say, convert this into exponential form. So here we have 125 to the exponent v is equal to x. So now we have this value equaling x, and we have this value equaling x. And so they, since x equals itself, we can say that those two values equal each other. So we have 5 to the 6 is equal to 125 to the v. And 125 can be thought of as 5 cubed. So we have 5 to the 6 is equal to 5 third, 5 to the 3 to the v. And so here we can say that 5 to the 6 is equal to 5 to the 3 v. And we use our b e e e if the bases are equal in two equal powers, then the exponents will be equal. That tells us that 6 equals 3v, and then we can clearly see that v is equal to 6 divided by 3, v is equal to 2. So our log base 125 of x equals 2, like we found out. So you're ready for your a few assignment questions, and we will continue on. So let's talk about logarithmic functions but talk about them in the sense that we talked about transformations in a previous unit. So here is our very famous type of equation here, where now instead of a, a specific or a general f of x, we have log function here. So we can say that y is equal to a times log bc of b times x minus h plus k. We use the letter c because um, we want to distinguish it from the letter B that we use with the horizontal stretch of, an, of a general uh, function. So let's take a look at class example four. We have y equals log base three of x shown. We're going to write the transformation associated with each of the following and sketch the graph on the grid. So I'm going to do all these equations and then we'll sketch them. If we start with y equals two log base three of x here, we can think of it as this type of format. Here we have the original f of x being like log base 3 of x and this a value is like this 2. So a equaling 2 then would be trans uh, interpreted as a vertical stretch 
by a factor of 2. Taking a look at part 2 here, we have y equals log base 3 of x minus 2. And here we can think of it as we have this f of x function, which is y equals log base 3 of x. But instead of using x, we use x minus 2. So here we think of it almost like a x was replaced with x minus h here, and h was equal to positive 2. If that's the case, then we're talking about a horizontal translation of two units to the right. And finally, in part 3, we have y equals log base 3 of x, which is the original f of x function. So we can think of this as y equals original f of x minus 2. And then that can help us to think of y equals f of x plus a k value. And if this is plus a k value, then the k here is equal to negative 2, which corresponds with a vertical translation of two units down. Okay, so let's take a look at our graph here and do part 1, part 2, and part 3. Taking a look at part 1, if we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, let's take some nice points here. This 1, a vertical stretch, would now become 2, and this 2 would become 4, and this would be pulled down this way. So here, if this was at 1 there, it's going to be at 2 here. But an important point here is that anything that's on the x-axis already is going to remain an invariant point. So we have this kind of graph happening here. y is equal to 2 log base 3 of x. And now we'll use a red pen here to do y equals log base 3 of x minus 2. Two units to the right, which means this point here will now become one, two points this way. This point here will become two points here. And this will move from 1, 0 to 3, 0. And let's see if we can move this one two spots. So one full and one two full here. And that's about there. Okay, draw this one like so. And this one is equal to, or y is equal to log base 3 of x minus 2. And let's do our other one here. And two units down, which means from the original, it comes one, two units down. This one here will come two units down. This one is two, so it'll be rated zero. And we get this action happening here. Let me just use a highlighter. So coming through and something like that. So that is our y is equal to log base three of x minus two. Let's answer question B here. Do any of the above transformations result in a change in the original domain or range? Well, here, if we talk about the... Yes, it does. If you take a look at the red one here, the red one looks like it only has x values that are greater than 2, which is different than the, the original one where x can be greater than 0. So here, when we talk about this, it's like, yes. The do, there's, there is a domain change. Is there a range change? Well, let's take a look at the range here. And these arrows keep going downwards, so it looks like y can be all negative, and it keeps going upwards too. So it looks like, although even in this case where it was down two units, if all y values were possible, then down two units wouldn't change the range at all. So no change to the range. But yes, there is a change to the domain in one of them. So let's state the equation of the asymptote for each part. So in part one, the asymptote was a vertical asymptote, which was the, the y-axis. So it has an equation of x equals 0. In part two, it was shifted over two units to the right. So instead of an asymptote at x equals 0, it was now at x equals 2. 
And in part three, again, you had, even though it's down two units, it still tended towards that y-axis, so it was still an asymptote of x equals zero. Let's investigate the graphs of y equals log base x to the n and y equals n log x. Now, one of the laws of the logarithm states that log x to the n is equal to n log x. You can bring this exponent down in front. However, let's ask a question. Are the graphs of y equals log x to the n and y equaling n log x identical? Well, let's investigate this by considering odd and even values. So here, I'm going to split this into two sections here where we have one, is go one side is going to be n values are odd here. And over here, we're going to have n values that are even. Okay, let's take a look at n equaling 3. Well, let's take a look here. We'll also have to split this up into sides where we have y is equal to log x squared and y is equal to, uh, sorry, x cubed here. If n is equal to 3, then this is going, going to be y equals 3 log x. Well, when I graph that, and what do I get? I get this one here, there's one, and this one is the same. Oh, well, that, that's very nice. Okay, what about when n is equal to 5? Here, y is equal to log x to the 5, y is equal to 5 log x. Well, what happens there? And we graph it, and we find out, hey, it looks like so, and looks like so. Hmm, they're exactly the same. Well, that's pretty cool. Right, now we'll try, and it's equal to 7, y is equal to log with x to the 7, and then on this side we'll say y is equal to 7 log x. And again, we have this graph, and here we see... Wow, well this is also the same here, and this is also the same here. Hmm. So for n values that are odd, then it looks like the same. Well, what happens when n values are even? So here we'll say n is equal to 2. And so we'll have y is equal to, you know, let's put this up here. We have y is equal to log of x squared, and then we have y is equal to log 2 log x. Oh, we draw those graphs here. And we find out, actually, log x squared looks something like this. There's like two branches of this happening. And then for log 2 log x, it's just this side. Hmm, doesn't have the same ones. Well, we try it for n is equal to 4, and we find out oh, this is y is equal to log x to the 4, this is y is equal to 4 log x. And what do we find? We find out that this actually looks like that, but this side again has 2. And finally, we'll, let's try y, n equals 6. So as y is equal to log x to the 6, and y is equal to 6 log x. And again, y equals 6 to log x, or 6 times log x gets you that one. But this side has 2. Wow, so what's happening here? Let me show you on, on a, an iPad here. So... Here I have, so here I have my Desmos app here again, and we're going to show you what's happening here. I have this n, let's just pause it right now. If n equals 1, then we can see that we just have one graph here, and it's the same graph. We have both graphs there, it's the same graph. When I move n equal to 2, then now we have one graph going this way and one graph going this way. And in fact, if I just let go of this one, you'll see that this one has both branches. When n is equal to 3, then it only happens to have one graph in it. When n equals 4, it's 2 again, and that one's just one side. 
here and so we, we just have this and let it play we can see that every time the n is an even number it's this purple branch shows up but doesn't show up for this one so you can see that happening that's pretty cool so what can we conclude here what well, we conclude then if n is odd then it's the graphs are identical but if n is even then they are not they are not well why is that well the domain of y equals log x to the n is x can't be equal to zero and the domain of y equals n log x is x has to be greater than zero remember that the argument of a log the argument of a log has to be greater than zero all right so you have enough tools now to complete your assignment and i will see you in class